In this video, I'm going to show you how to fold a traditional origami basket from two sheets of paper. I'll use a square with a side length of 15 centimeters or 6 inches, as well as a strip that has the same length, so 15 centimeters or 6 inches, but it's just a quarter of the width, so 3.75 centimeters or 1.5 inches. The resulting basket then has a side length of 5 cm or 2 inches and a height of 2.5 cm or 1 inch, as well as this really nice, robust handle. I got inspired to fold this model when exploring a new origami book especially for beginners, Origami Made Simple by Russell Wood. It teaches the basics of origami and helps you progress from simple to more advanced models many traditional but also some original designs by Russell Wood. So, if you're looking for a book to get started, either for yourself or as a present for others, do check it out. You can find more details on the website origamiexpressions.com. Origami can be such a wonderful hobby for kids and adults alike, especially if you're stuck inside. So, let's get folding. I'm going to use a slightly different color here, just because I wanted to show that you should use the color you like best. And I also wanted to show you how to get that strip just in case. So for this, I'm first going to take one sheet and we're going to fold edge to edge and try to work slowly and precisely so that everything looks really nice in the end. And then we're going to take this raw edge and bring it to the folded edge and crease again. Now this is the strip you need. You could use a knife to cut this, which I usually do, or scissors, but I find it quite difficult to get a straight edge, which is not the worst in this case. But I also wanted to show you what you can do without scissors. For this make a really strong crease and then Reverse that crease, going exactly along the same crease, and again make a really strong crease. And you can do that a couple of times to weaken the paper. And if that's not enough, you can even slightly dampen one of your fingers. So I'm just pushing this in a bottle cap. And then run along the crease and reverse it and again run along the crease but don't use too much water. This softens the paper even more and then just try and secure the paper kind of next to the creases and pull and then you should get a very precise rip. Just be sure to always move the hands as the paper rips so that you always rip along that edge. So now we have our strip. Let's start preparing the handle. First we're going to align edge with edge to fold in half and make a crease. Unfold and now bring the raw edges to that central crease, not quite touching it. This helps fold that strip in half in a second. Definitely make sure not to overlap that crease, else you will have an additional layer of paper and that just makes it harder to fold that handle in half, which we're going to do now, just folding along the crease line like that. And then strengthening all the creases again by using that large section of your thumbnail to run across the edge where there is the crease. So our handle is prepared. Let's work on the main part of the basket. For this we're going to work with the color side up for a mostly colored model with some nice color change. 
fold tip to tip to crease the diagonal. Then unfold, rotate and repeat. And unfold. Then flip over and now with the white side up, fold edge to edge. Unfold, rotate and repeat. Origami is not just about folding but also about unfolding. Now we're going to unfold again and we're going to bring one corner to the center so that you make a crease between this halfway point and that halfway point. If you're unsure about the center, always check that you're going to the halfway points. I actually prefer doing it this way, just in case your paper isn't quite square, uh, because these are the markings that are important and not really that center one. We're going to do that with all four corners. And I like to do the two opposite ones because now I can really see where I want to put those other two creases without having to check for these halfway points as much because the color change makes it very visible. And the last one. Now we're going to take these corners and bring them to this halfway point right there. Can you see that? So we're going to line them exactly there and then add a crease. And of course it's easier to work while the paper is flat on your surface. And the third one. I like to hold up the paper in case the lighting kind of hides it a little bit, which is the case with my recording setup right here. But if you don't have to do that, that's absolutely fine. And now again, unfold, simply take these tabs and pull them out. I think it's a lot of fun. Now we're going to fold edge to edge again like this. And now we're going to take both sides here and we're going to push in so that you get this kind of shape. Maybe press on here a little bit. Can you see that? And push it together. Now you take two flaps to one side and two flaps to the other side. Like this. And we can just strengthen that a little bit. This is what we call a square base. Now we're going to take one of these flaps and fold it up and flip over and repeat. Now we're going to take one of these layers and fold it over and flip over and repeat on the other side. So now we have a fully colored square again. Now we're going to take these corners and bring them to the center and make a strong crease, like this. And repeat on the other three corners. You can unfold these so that the model lies nice and flat and makes it a bit easier to fold precisely. And once we have that, we're again going to flip over one flap and do the same on the other side, like this. Now we're going to rotate this model right here and we're going to fold up this corner and then take the next layer and fold it up 
along that edge and make a strong crease right here. And unfold that one again, leaving the other one secure. Now let's add that handle. For this, we're simply going to push it in here so that, you know, you see this crease line right here and we're going to center it along that crease line and then close this up. And now we're going to hold the paper together and fold this edge up to that edge right there. And try to not have the paper drift. So you get something like this. And you can see that this tip right here is completely hidden underneath. But if the paper does drift, you will see that tip. So let's flip this over and I'm going to show you what happens if the paper does drift just a little bit. So first fold up again and then we're going to squeeze this second part of the handle down and try not to add a crease right here so that you get a nice rounded handle. So we're going to just squeeze this through here, align it, and then close that crease. And now if you don't work quite precisely, then the paper might drift a little bit. And then you can see that small corner sticking out. Don't worry if that happens, it's really hard to prevent paper drift if you're not quite as experienced yet. So in that case, just take that tip and fold it in a little bit and no one's going to know. Just like that. Now we're going to secure this flap right here that we folded up by folding in along the creases we prepared a couple of steps earlier. This one, and also that one, and this one, and that one. I like to pre-crease these fold lines so that it's easier to get a clean finish on your basket. Now take these two flaps and open them up by pressing on the crease, like this, to open the basket. Also push on that crease and this one right there. So you're just pushing on these creases. Can you see these? This one is still sticking out, so I'm just going to push on it up to this crease line right here. Just pushing. I can show you from the other side what it looks like when you push on that crease, like this. And then to make that basket even nicer, just push on these creases to strengthen them. Some of them are valley folds and not mountain folds, so pushing on them makes them go in the right direction for a clean finish, like this. And finally, we're going to fold in these sides right here. Make sure to secure these layers together and then push in the paper like this and then make a really, really strong crease right here. For this, I'm going to use my thumbnail and my kind of this cup of the finger and I'm going to crease to make it really strong. And same on the other side or perhaps with the left hand whatever you prefer, like this. And this makes the paper stay down quite well. Versus, I can show you on this side, when you just fold it in and up inside, then it kind of comes undone again. And that's because this crease is unfolding. So if you strengthen that crease, just as I did on the other side, then it will stay in place. Of course, if you want, you can also add a dot of glue underneath here, or if you're filling your basket, for example, with some Easter eggs, 
then this paper is weighed down too and you will have it nicely secured. And there you have it. Your traditional origami basket is all done. Now, if you liked this video, do let me know by giving it a thumbs up, commenting below and sharing it with others. Plus, if you're looking for more models to fold, check out the Easter origami playlist I've put together or the one for boxes and containers. Russell Wood also has a YouTube channel with lots of fun origami tutorials for you to enjoy. Finally, subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss my next videos. I hope to see you around and, as always, happy folding! <laughs>